Hello everyone and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3. I'm Lord Forwind, this time with a short guide on what technologies to focus. Now, most of you will understand what the big importance of different technologies are, but this is for the people who still are asking me questions about this. So obviously there's four ages um, and there's different technology in each ages, some of which is more important than others and I'll try and go over that. First off, I should note though, if you are a tribe, like this guy is here, um, in order to get to the next tech age here, you actually need to reform to the feudal culture. It doesn't say this right here, but when I've done it, it really <laughs> doesn't let you do it until you adopt feudal ways. And you can't adopt feudal ways until you have all the tribal era innovations, which makes it a little bit harder to do that. You also have some of these other criteria, but really they're not that hard to get. So anyway, what technologies to focus? Well, in the tribal area, there's several technologies that are more useful than others. So basically the rule of thumb for every age is you want the military, technology, fortifications, any succession laws, and any extension of your domain laws sooner rather than um, later. So what does that mean? Well, it means in the first age, you want to usually, I've found, the best thing to focus is the barracks here to get the tribal era military buildings. Of course, you can only focus if you're the head of the culture, um, which in this case we are not. Uh, but if we would, we'd be focusing barracks probably first to get tribal era military buildings, which of course you build with a reasonable amount of gold, but more prestige. The next one would probably be crop rotation here to get the economic buildings, the tribal era and then mots to get fortifications, and then after that, probably ledger here to get the additional domain limit. Obviously, this can change. Um, if you're expanding a lot, uh, ledger will be more useful early on than mots, and maybe even than crop rotation here, for the economy. Um, the funny part is there's actually a technology here to reach research the Gavelkind Confederate Partition Law, which you already start with. So this is probably the only era where trying to research a change in succession law isn't really needed. Outside of that, you've got other options. See, some of these apply effects that are more useful in the other ones, like this one, city planning. This applies to cities, but if you're starting as a tribal nation, you're not going to have that. So in some ways, this should be the last thing you research. Uh, plenary assemblies. This is if you want a better tribal hold. Um, it has other effects, obviously, if you're feudal. You get the limited crown authority law. This is not as big of a priority as some of the others I've found. Um, public works, max, maximum existing development penalty at 20. Not particularly needed. Um, um, starting in this country here, I'm just showing you tutorial island. Uh, your development's four. The odds of you getting to 20 before getting that technology just passively is really low. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Stuff like this one's de uh, jure country casas belli. Uh, less important, um, mainly because early on you're going to be conquering things regardless, and you don't really care what your de jure lands are. Um, up here, though, there's a couple different ones. So obviously you want the military ones and you want the fortifications. But this one right here, Banas, gives you a levy reinforcement rate of 15. This is going to be really useful because it's going to allow you to fight more wars. Um, basically, when you lose troops, you'll regenerate them faster, which is pretty useful. But I would not take that one for the third up here in the military. I would probably go for mustering grounds first. It allows you to keep a larger men-at-arms regiment, and it increases the amount you can support, which is really useful because men-at-arms is basically the core of your armies, and so you want more of that. Down here, you get quilted armor. This will give you armored footmen. Uh, once you get this, uh, you want to at least put one of your men-at-arms on armored footmen over uh, light footmen, because these guys will absolutely tear them to shreds. Um, they counter spearmen, but also they just have really high damage and toughness compared to some of the other ones. More expensive, but really useful. Um, if you're going to be sieging a lot of castles, you'll want onangers, um, but the odds of you doing that in the tribal area era, not particularly useful. Now down here, you're going to have the regional cultural ones. Um, some of these... You're going to start with unlocked other ones you'll have to research um for example if you start down in west africa you have a unique cultural regional one and you have the west african canoes to research i have not seen these as game breaking although this one for the norse is really handy and if you're in the middle east camel riders are a better light cavalry etc basically if you can research them it's worth researching otherwise um 
check out what they give you because some are better than others. Like West African Canoe's ability to raid overseas, awesome, but I find it's not as useful as, say, uh, what Steel here, which gives you a heavy infantry and cavalry bonus quite some time. Next, um, if you start as a non-tribal nation, uh, you'll get to this much sooner than a tribal. But you have to have discovered four of the innovations from the tribal area. I'm just going to refer to them as techs, even though they're technically called innovations, because they're basically technologies. Uh, within this one, you have a slight difference on what you actually want to focus on. Um, some of the stuff for the military and eco economic buildings are actually locked behind um, a f some of the fortification buildings. So this makes battlements a much higher priority than some of the other ones. Uh, I found it was still worthwhile to try and snag uh, this technology. Um, man I'm going to say it wrong. Manoralism. Um, just to get the economic buildings unlocked. Uh, you won't be able to upgrade them that much, but it's worthwhile to be able to at least build some. Um, you could go and get this one as well, but I find getting battlements so that you can improve them is more useful. This is probably the only technological error where I would say prioritize the economy over the military buildings mainly because if you're swapping from a tribe to a feudal settlement a settled nation you're going to have the problem of all of a sudden all your men at arms uh, retinues are going to swap from prestige to economy which is going to mean your military experience is going to plummet like a rock uh, which means trying to get your men at arms supported is going to be more useful than having larger levies early on uh, outside of that, you definitely want to snag hereditary rule, probably either first or second of the technologies, battlements or coinage first, uh, sorry, manatorialism. Uh, depends what you're looking for. Uh, this will allow you, obviously, to change your um, succession law to partition, which is much better than confederate partition because it does not create new titles on death. So you can keep two kingdoms united under one title which you couldn't under confederate. So this will allow you to consolidate your power a lot more and expand further, which means it's worth getting and it's worth getting early. Uh, after that, you want to try and get after uh, hereditary rule, probably battlements and then um, economy, then military buildings. Uh, obviously, this will depend a little bit based off um, if you've got other technologies, like if you're in Iberia, this one's pretty useful. Um, if you're in Germany, that one's useful. If you're in Arabia, that one's very useful. Negative 15% arms maintenance is good to the point that you might even want to do that before you do the econ economic buildings. Um, but bailiffs over here, you want to snag for the domain limit. Uh, I wouldn't go for royal prerogative, uh, armillary sphere, unless you're doing a lot of naval warfare. Uh, communal government even, or chronicle writing early on, um, mainly just because, oh, and coinage. Um, just because those technologies and stuff are not going to be giving you as big of a boost as having new buildings on the field. These are more long-term ones. Like this one, you're not going to want to get to high crown authority or absolute crown authority early on um, until you can actually reform your succession more. So this is, a this is probably the last one or two technologies you'll want to reach. In terms of military... Um, Household soldiers is going to be really useful because it'll increase the amount of men at arms regiments you can have and their size. However, you're probably still going to be struggling economically to support your full men at arm limit. So, this is not as big of a priority as getting arch saddles. This will basically get you early knights. Um, armored horsemen is really good. They're solid against archers, but more importantly, they have very high damage, very high toughness, and good pursuit. So, you want to get those in the field sooner than having more men at arms honestly uh, if you've got any light cavalry and you can afford it get rid of the light cavalry replace it with these guys it's much better um i find actually horseshoes over here for the movement speed to be worth more than mangonels and um, household soldiers so just to summarize hereditary rule probably battlements probably coin it um mineralism burrs and then probably arch saddle and then horseshoes, then mangonels. Honestly, the civic technologies are probably the least useful in this age. They become more useful in higher eras, but uh, you're going to start picking them up faster once you move to the next era anyway. So, in some cases, like 
this one, unless you're doing naval invasion, don't bother to research it. Let it yourself get it passively or spend like three months getting it. In terms of the high medieval era, obviously it's locked for a while and you're going to run across the same issues with stuff getting locked behind your fortification buildings and others. So what do you want to focus on here? Well, if you want, you can do this one, which is very useful. Knighthood. Direct Vassal Opinion plus 5. This deserves a special mention. This is one of the few ways you can improve your direct vassals from revolting against you. It's not the easiest thing in the world to maintain a large empire. And so keeping vassals happy is worth pulling off. Also down here, you got heraldry. So you can do high partition law. This will give about 50% of your titles upon succession to one heir, making it a priority as well. To be honest, I'd probably do heraldry first, then knighthood, and then work for the military buildings. But again, at this point, you guys would know what's going on in your game better than me, because it's always very different. Uh, after that, just looking over these ones, you've got different culture penalties and other stuff. A lot of these are regional specific ones. Um, some of which are more useful than others. Like this one, if you're in France, you get extra domain taxes. That can be really useful, um, especially if you're French and you want to support things. Down here, you've got peerage. Um, this is very useful uh, if you can afford to do it in France, yeah, because it, again, adds five to direct vassals. But if you're a vassal as well, it has a penalty to other vassals. Great if you're king or emperor and ruling over people. Not so great if you're like a duke then you have issues within your own lands. Uh, outside of that, guilds is always worth taking for the domain limit. Some of these like banking, urbanization, and even scuttage and divine right are not uh, high priorities. Um, divine right here has allows you to press several of your claims in a single war, so it is very good. Um, so you probably want to take it like fourth or fifth, but it's less of a priority than reforming your succession, making your vassals happy, and getting new buildings on the field. After that, you can get crossbowmen. Um, again, another men-at-arms increase and trebuchets. Uh, if you're interested in it, uh, crossbowmen is really good against heavy infantry and cavalry. It basically nullifies those two. So if you're fighting a lot of armies that have heavy infantry or knights, by all means, pick up crossbowmen before you pick up trebuchets and an improvement to your men-at-arms. Uh, after that, uh, some of these, as usual, you don't have to really focus on, like banking and stuff. It's useful for development growth, and this one that gives you a higher development penalty. The odds of you succeeding the existing development penalty before you get to the next stage are pretty slim. So let's jump to late medieval, 1200 AD. Again, you're going to want to focus on your buildings reasonably quickly that's pretty much the rule of thumb is when you can get new buildings get new buildings uh, they have a lot of benefits but however right here is the number one technology you want to get in this age primogeniture primogeniture however people say it a lot of different ways basically succession by one heir you've got the primo and ultimo versions of it oldest and youngest child respectively this will allow you to build and keep a power base in your capital should be your capital duchy, but basically it allows you to hold your land and pass it on coherently to your heir, which makes it very, very good at building late game empires and basically keeping your king in, powerful, in power for a lot longer. Uh, after that, obviously court officials down here for the domain limits worth pushing on. However, at this point, you're basically to the end of the, a good portion of the tech stuff. So you're going to want to focus on... Uh, getting all of this at some point obviously some are a higher priority than others like if you're dutch uh, and or you're the netherlands this is really useful um, development levy ceiling it basically allows you to play tall this one if you're in uh, deacon india same faith opinion plus five is worth noting and this one if you're in italy you get more mercenary companies which is very very useful uh, obviously renaissance thought is going to be one of your last priorities unless you've been heavily focusing development the whole game. Ermine cloaks honestly probably should be the last technology you research in this age. 10 monthly prestige is great, but you really should not be having prestige issues. Uh, Noblesse Oblige is really good again, creates more opinion among your vassals. 
Up here you got plate armor, it basically strengthens your heavy cavalry and heavy infantry. Good, but not overwhelmingly amazing, because if you're fighting even battles in Crusader Kings, you're doing something wrong. Sappers will give you reduced phase, a siege phase. So again, primogeniture, get your buildings. So this one, royal armories and cranes. Then think about what else you might want. I would honestly go for noblesse oblige next followed by court officials, just to give you the strongest base of your lands, uh, and then get all the military stuff, then work your way down the civic. Obviously, if you've got some of these, it might be worth detouring to snag them. However, none of these ones are particularly so amazing that, uh, other than Deacon Unity, that I would say take them in the first three or four technologies. So, to summarize, base rule of thumb, you want to get your any succession law changes done as soon as you can. That should almost always be your first technology, except in the late early medieval age, if you've just reformed from a tribe, you want to try and get your buildings unlocked um, and get the economy unlocked before the military. That way you can actually support an army. Once that's done, work through other stuff. Still get the partition law, but it's a little bit less of a priority. So... Succession, fortification usually as a rule of thumb, because it does lock the level of which you can upgrade buildings. Then I tend to find economy more useful than military. It's kind of personal preference. Then snag, increase to your domain limit, uh, and then work your way through the other technologies that you need to get to the next era. And then obviously, once you get to the next era, you do receive a bonus to finishing the technologies in your previous era. So if there's any ones you particularly want, like, reduced prestige cost for reasons for war by all means go back and research it but get your succession law changed first um in some ways the innovation slash technology the big goal the, the biggest most useful thing is unlocking succession and then buildings anyway hopefully you guys have enjoyed this hopefully this helps you understand what technologies and stuff you should focus on obviously you have to be the head of the culture to do so uh, that should be one of your first priorities in any game trying to get control of it however if you're in somewhere like an empire like in france or the byzantines you're not going to be the cultural head in which case you can kind of sit back and enjoy the ride um, but i would try and gain control of it tech is king as usual in paradox games and honestly, spending almost the entire game focusing on your scholar tree here is not really a bad thing to do in game. Just if you're a tech head and you want to do better in the long run, go down technology. It's really the only tree that gives you a long term benefit. Anyway, that is it for me. If you like this, please do subscribe, like and comment. Uh, I have other guides. If you haven't seen them, go check those out. They're actually doing really well. So thanks to the people who are watching them. And I'll see you guys all next time in another video. Bye for now.